Do your ears get hot? In general, just out of nowhere? No. Like are, when you have headphones on, do they get hot? Oh, if I have headphones on? Just any time. Do your ears ever get hot? Like, are they hot right now? Well, my ears hang low and they wobble to and fro. I can tie them in a knot and I can tie them in a bow. No, my ears are not hot right now. Why not? Thanks for sharing, Corbin. Like, what other parts of your body are hot right now? Uh, my balls. Yeah. A lot of heat. Like, where does the most heat admit from your body? My head. Your head? Yeah. I think Leland's the same way. That's not... Yeah, without question. My ears? I'm, I run warm, too. My kids, I, my nickname, I'm Warmy Daddy. I'm, if they want to warm up, they yeah. come to dad. No, I'm very warm as well. Yeah. Uh, but my feet are by far the most warm part of my body. Oh, really? That's like why. That's why. Like, I asked my wife, the, "Do your feet ever just at the end of the day you take off your socks and they're just wet?" Oh, yeah, no. I, it you depends do on that? the day. It depends on the day. It is every single day, even in winter. Yeah, they're they're sweaty right now. Really? Wow. Do your palms sweat? No. Okay. It's my feet, my ears. Yeah. Get like they're probably really the red, hot spots, and they get red. Yeah. And uh, 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 nether region. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I definitely my my head and shoulders, my knees and toes. Yeah, my head, shoulders, knees, and toes, and then um, my taint. <laughs> Josh. Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex of Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. And on threads if you dare. Thank you to everybody who supports on Patreon. Follow us for your trending cards. Today, this is something that no one has requested at all. Great. The new director's roundtable is out. With probably a bunch of no names. Exactly. It's actually a great panel. I so, heard about this. A couple of stupid babies DM'd me on Instagram about so this. So it's uh, And companion. I think commented on it as well, maybe on my channel oh yeah i don't know uh but it's a new director's roundtable uh from film companion so yep. she's doing that she's, thing. she's heading it up but you got kieran johar so that'll be nice yep conconison sharma yep uh you got this name where where are you i don't see where the mouse oh, right and everything is oh we are highlighting uh vetri Maran from vidutali part one the tamil film that we loved yep uh then geo baby geo baby we haven't seen this cut nelson uh, this, we haven't seen this film yet the Core, Get dialed the core. Uh, because it didn't come here. Oh. But he directed um, 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 <laughs> That's uh, the one I wanted. Yeah, yeah, no. He directed uh, <laughs> Great Indian Kitchen. Oh! And many other things that we've seen. Geo Baby directed Geo, Great Indian Geo Kitchen. Baby. How yeah, did yeah. I not remember that? Uh, and many other yeah. Molly films that we loved. Uh, but Nelson, obviously. Yeah. Uh, say this name. Hemanth Rao, uh, the, from Rao. the the side Sapta, A and yep. side B. Yep. Uh, this Avanesh Arun. We haven't seen that film, but he directed um, Putal Lok. He's the director of Putal Lok. Awesome. And then this guy right Karthik here, Karthik Subaraj from Double yep. X and Double X. a few other things of his that we've seen. Cool. So we're familiar, I believe, with everybody to a certain extent, some more than others. Nelson, uh, but it's a really uh, I like the difference in the. Um, I think there's from. Is there a Telugu one? Um, he's Tamil, Hindi, Hindi, Tamil, Malayalam, Tamil, Canada. I'm assuming he's Hindi. The Padan So I'm yeah. guessing. So it looks like it's just those three industries. But uh, it's a bunch of great directors. So th this will be very exciting. Yep. And we've gotten a requested a ton. Obviously. Yeah. I'm excited to see Nelson talk. Yeah, me too. Uh, you know, we love him. Yep. Uh, so let's just uh, get into this without any further adieu. Uh, also, are there any... Uh, Dost. In there? Future Dosts. No. I've talked to a few of them on... Uh, Instagram. No, but have YouTube, come but we to haven't, we the, haven't channel. Come on the channel. Yeah. No. You don't become a dose until you uh, come yeah. on the channel. Yeah. Sorry, it's exclusive it's here. A, it's exclusive. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. You're going to have to maybe one day. Uh, Which means technically, Mark Bennington, sorry, bro. Yeah, not our dose. Not our dose yet. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. 
the irony is that I wouldn't know the first thing about love, and I've only made a career out of it. So uh, you know, stranger things have happened, but this is the strangest part of my career. And I realized I can only finish 10% of the film in 20 days. 70% of the budget spent already. I I didn't know what I was shooting. I still don't know what I'm doing with the film. I'm always confused. I'm looking forward to the second. And like the, the idea of changing that uh, particular casting around that gave me a certain excitement. And I wish that people would cast more imaginatively. This journey as a filmmaker, it's very solitary kind of a process. I I didn't know how to write. Didn't know any writers. You know, I turned filmmaker by accident. The thing that I've learned is that there are days when you go home and you feel really horrible about being a filmmaker. And there are days when you go home, you feel like you've trapped magic for eternity. Even if it fails, let it be with my gut. It's not only that. Let me take the blame. I don't want someone else to confuse me. The main motive was not to tell this message, but to show that what if there was a camera there shooting everything? If cinema could have been used in a better way in this situation. Right now, I've got a tagline that I'm I'm a feminist kind of filmmaker, a political filmmaker. If there is no feminism in my film, people try to find out feminism. <laughs>
Are you still right? I still write. I mean, I cannot type on a laptop. I don't know what to do with it. Like, I, I feel like... Long hand That's writing. interesting. And very, like, uh, unreadable. That's right. <laughs> like, it's all scribbled. And uh, he long I just sat there for about script. 10 days, nothing was within me. And then one day I went back to a story of uh, my father's family. It happened with my uncle. Um, and I just went back to it. And then I began the journey of developing the story with a group of three writers, actually. I made I like think a Stallone writer's still does that. with Shashank and Ishita and Sumit. And then the doubts happened again because of COVID. Because every time you, we got two months off, you, st- you started seeing your rushes and like, is this going to work out? Like there was one point where I thought myself that this may not make any sense to anyone. It's been, it's too long. I'm directing up for seven years. I was doubting myself. I was doubting the film. I was doubting the industry. I was doubting how our film's going to work. So when you talk about doubt, it was a big shout in our in, in my mind. And I'm doubt sure the collective minds the time. of the film fraternity because Obviously. at one point we were told like no one's coming back to the cinema halls. Uh, you know, there's a that digital takeover. Uh, so yeah, when you say doubt, there was people a love plenty. movies till the day I think my film released. I was. Uh, a site uh, not for sore eyes, for for like I was looking or walking around like like a like a dead man walking. I was that stressed. So yeah, the, the stress and doubt doesn't leave you. Vegifi, this is like this journey is full of doubts. It started with doubt for me because I wanted uh, a story where Suri could uh, fit in as the lead. Suri was. Uh, has been doing comedy roles for the past like 10 12 years mm. and to make him the protagonist of a of a That's story crazy. which is also a serious one there itself i had the doubt and uh, then i started working on a novella based on a novella and then i after 15 days like after investing myself into that world and started liking that I got to know from the writer that he'd given rights to someone else. Oh. Then, but but I really liked the world and the people in the world. So I I sent him whatever I had written and said, can you make a like story out of whatever that I've written so that I can legitimize my my <laughs> script and, and stay away from the person who's bought the rights of that original story, claiming that I I stole from that. Then he said. Wow. No, no, I had written something similar in 98 itself. So he gave me a six page short story. And that is where this journey started for me. And I told my producer that I will finish this film in uh, 35 days, the way I finished Bizarre Night. And we went to the locations. And then Both I parts? realized I can only finish 10% of the film in <laughs> 20 days. Yeah. <laughs> so we. Oops. And 70% of the budget spent already. Oh. So. <laughs> So I, I came down Pro- producers and, are and definitely loving him. him. And the location that we were in did not allow any vehicles to go there. So we had to carry all the uh, oh, my word. equipments there. And then we built tents for like 250 people. We built toilets there. And then we stayed there. We built like 20 soil. No, not 20. Like I, I think 10 or 12 toilets for the village wow. villagers there. And then we were using it. And... One fine day, we had one storm coming. All the tents were like gone. Oh. We had to come down. And once we were on the planes, I realized that I can't finish this film. Then I called my producer and said, Sir, should we think of working on something else? He said, Sir, already we've spent most of the budget. Why not we try Why not we try pursuing this itself? Then I said, okay, going to the hills is a problem. I will try to figure out a, a location where I can shoot here. The, 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 there's, a, there's a sequence of the base camp and all of that. I thought I'll shoot that in like 10 days and we, we'll be done with most of the film. Then I go there and then we, and then once I see the location, I start liking it and then I start shooting it. Like <coughs> After 40 days also, I've not finished what I wanted to finish in 10 days. So by that time, oh, the man. budget was triple the numbers that what I said. So, oh, Kikara Joe, so the producer. Then I was shooting. He's like, hell no. He came into the film, and then when Vijay Sethupati came in, the producer was relieved that we can sell it for a better price. Mm. And because he yeah. came in, I started writing more. And uh, by the end of 120 days of shoot, I called my producer and said, I think we'll, we'll have to find a way to break even. And then he said, Sir, whatever you shoot, you shoot. Mm. 
I had another. Yeah, that is amazing. That's a great producer. Talk about trust. I had to. No other. No other. Karen Johar is the good producer right now. I thought. Then I we decided that we'll make it into a two part thing, and then once we decided that we'll make it a two part thing, uh, a simple intermission sequence ended up being one main act action the break. sequence for the climax of the first part, and then went back to the first opening of the film, which was not working. Then we decided to execute one shot, mm. like that that ten minute shot. There's we have to talk long, about yeah, that one, shot. One, yeah, one, one long yeah. take, and then. We somehow managed and finished the first part. Then after the release of the first part, now I'm wondering what to do with the second part. I, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with the second part. I'm, it's ready. I'm trying to send it to festivals, but for the theater, send I think me. something is missing. So I, I told my producer I'll shoot for ten days. He said okay. Now I'm shot for eighteen days. I think I have another thirty five days. Who is this? Who is this? Exactly. It's like who the heck is this guy just letting you do Karen whatever his mind is exploding? Hell, you want to do? Yeah. He lives in Chennai. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Taking the next flight to Chennai. <laughs> <laughs> this magnanimous I, I, man. Yeah. I, I said I'll finish the film in four and a half hours. For the first part alone, we spent around sixty-five. I mean, oh, good night. The budgeting. Look at her face. I didn't he said it'll be four and a half, and it turned into sixty-four. Shooting. Oh God. So I, I didn't know whatever shooting. I still don't know what I'm doing with the film. <laughs> I just. You just made a great with film. With your track record, it's very yeah. difficult to believe you didn't know. <laughs> That's <laughs> flabbergasting. Yeah. It's, it's very. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm always confused. I'm I'm not sure what I want to do, and my team knows how to work around me. They'll say, "Okay, who all you want? Okay, these are the actors, and what are the props you think you might need? I think I will need these things, and I think we need to have this period's costume, like seventies costumes. Okay, now that's all. They'll not ask for the scene. They'll not ask for any details. Wow! <laughs> wow! Wow! What so an amazing I called Vijay said, production. It's like shooting in the dark and hitting the bullseye. The He's already finished more than seventy days. And Ningle, you look his putter getting long. Translate. He just said, "Yeah, he just, he just said, you are like you, you are self sabotaging yourself. I am putting so many allegations against yourself. Yeah. Confessions. I, and you are making no pitch to a producer. Right? <laughs> no, no. This Everybody is like a statement. Like, Note to self. If, if you like something in my film." Please be prepared for this. Yeah. <laughs> and also, his, his film definitely should have been sent over to Gio, 2018. Gio, what about you? I have a lot Easily. of doubts. Uh, but I clear with myself. I uh, just think in the side of uh, audience, and I just resolve that. And the same time, I already discuss with my my partner Bena and my <laughs> DOP, my editor. And then only uh, I got an answer. Uh, if you delete this, if you add something or not, that's why I'm working. And same uh, thing, I'm doing uh, hand writing till now, and mm. the same way I can only read that. Mm. <laughs> and, and there is no proper screen for 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 me uh, when I'm writing. Just just see orders only. But proper screenplay means there is a screenplay, <clears throat> but proper dialogue is not there. I'm improvising. I'm waiting for the last minute for getting a dialogue. Oh wow! Getting It's a so polished one. It's so interesting how they differentiate screenplay version. and dialogue. Yeah. So in every time I'm, I'm also an also a kind of uh, yeah. audience. When when we're seeing on uh, watch on a theater, what I, I feel, what I felt, that is I'm thinking always. So that is a uh, my my <laughs> kind of filmmaking. This is incredible because in our heads, like. Everyone's fully in control of their craft. There's a storyboard. Everyone knows exactly what they're doing, and here you are saying no one knows. No, I think it depends. This is not a proper way. This huh. is comfort. This is my comfort. And it depends right. on the film. You yeah. work yeah. best like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Avinash, you do you follow this school? Of course, it's completely in doubt, anxiety, everything constantly. Like I don't filmmaker by accident. I studied cinematography. <laughs> Killa happened ten years back. And I had to wait for ten years for my second feature film. You know, so uh, it's, it 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 was uh, like yeah, I, mean, I didn't know where to pitch, how to pitch. But when Patal look happened, I I sort of like uh, gathered a little bit of courage, and then I stopped being a cinematographer. And, and this journey, 
as a filmmaker, you know, it's 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 very solitary kind of a process. I I didn't know how to write, didn't know any writers, you know. So mm. so so just to spend time with yourself during the pandemic, oh. and that decision sort of like like took like We've a seen lot that, right? That's uh, inside. And uh, oh, yeah, well, we and then it. when I got to know that Padal looks, he's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we like got that. pushed because of so some Marathi. some problems. And uh, I didn't know what to do, and I I was like I I didn't want to go back being the cinematographer. Uh, particularly for this time because I waited uh, like for for a long time, mm-hmm. you know, and then uh, uh, I, uh, like okay. when then some like you pushed to the limits. I had only four months, and I I went to meet my uh, dearest friend Chetanya Tamani, and we had a very long conversation. And I like for eight nine hours we were talking, and I I really felt very charged up. I I went to my home. I started writing at twelve o'clock in the night. And in the morning, I had the, all the pointers. And in in couple of weeks' time, we made the screenplay. I called Varun Grover. That Varun, this is what I want to do. Would you be uh, okay to write, like, consider to write dialogues? And he heard it and he liked it. Similarly, actors, I I send them the script and they got on board. And in in four months' time, uh, we had shot our film in in twenty five days. So that's so yeah. That that was the journey with three of us. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Hema, uh, for me, this particular film has been riddled with see that much films, taller than everybody has been riddled with uh, this is just doubt from, I think from a very chair. long time because I wrote this script, wrote wrote this idea about twelve, thirteen years ago, mm. and every time I pitched it, I was met with rejection because they were like, nobody's going to watch this. Uh, it's not. It doesn't have the right elements for it to work commercially, and. So it it was it was always something that people were said is not going to work. So I had carried it with me all this while. So there was a lot of doubt within yourself. And the job description, like he said, like everybody is sort of alluded to, is it is anxiety. It is driven by anxiety. But the demand of the job is also to ensure that you don't distribute the anxiety. To everybody yeah. around you, yeah. you keep it within. You you have to handle Absolutely. it and give the notion that you are in control. Right. Yeah. I hear so, so many directors yeah. say that because the notion that because you're actors in don't do well if 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 it comes across like you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. The producer producer won't be happy if you come across like you don't the know. The whole crew, everybody. So it, it, the best way I have figured out is to be vulnerable and to be as communicative and uh, you know uh, sort of open yourself up to your team. and that sort of allows other people also to be vulnerable with you and to make something like that is a very beautiful process and and over a period of time you realize you don't get everything right and it's okay you know there are days where the more number of days you work in films this is my fourth film i mean if i consider both films as two films separately then it is four films the thing that i've learned is that you'll have good days and you'll have bad days mm-hmm. and there are days when you go home and you feel really horrible about about being a filmmaker and there are days when you go home and it's just if you feel like you've trapped magic for eternity mm-hmm. you know so you just you you learn how to deal with that better with time yeah. and uh, it, i think that doubt is a very powerful check uh, for us as filmmakers it's a very unhealthy space if you are very confident internally i in fact if i shoot something very confidently i start doubting myself <laughs> even more because i'm like wait this can't be this can't be right you know it <laughs> wasn't so easy it wasn't it, it's yeah. like this happened too easily there's yeah. something abyss you know yeah. Yeah. so it it is i mean it's a beautiful thing i really enjoy it but the anxiety you get used to it so much <laughs> that when it goes away you don't know what to do it's uh, it's actually uh, you yeah. know you, you're like Yeah. You feel suddenly empty, yeah. which is what is happening now. <laughs> You're empty. Yeah, completely. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Nelson? When did you have doubt with Jayla? Never. Through on the process and the writing process. Um, but what made me come out of that is uh, Rajinis. Not literally him. I would somehow wanted I'm to sure. do on Rajinis. Talk about being confident. So when the process is happening, I convince my. I used to convince myself. Don't leave this project. You have to do this. Somehow you have to do. This. But you had that level of doubt where you wanted to leave the project. Not exactly. If it's not well coming out in the paper, yeah. Of course, it's not going to happen. Mm. Either he will stop it or I will stop it. Mm. So that is the thing which make What me. What happened? With... 
wrote that entire script and after I've, that I've heard while shooting also I had the I'm same sure doubts because um, <coughs> first time I think I were not in his control, made, made yeah. him play his age so yes let him play that his was age. the major doubt in me because a lot of people told me no don't uh, don't listen make him that. play his age I'm gonna let him do Stick with whatever he has done already but I was little confident and not confident about it in the both thing but some okay even if it fails let it be with my gut mm, exactly so whatever i feel i'll make it if it's not working as well working let me take the blame um, i don't want someone else to convince uh, right so i confuse me he's probably learned that lesson so finally no exactly uh, with beast knowing yeah. his audience and what all he did in this 50 years uh, it was a very big challenge and that itself is a big uh, confusion for me whether i can satisfy that much audience <laughs> or i can see my target for this film is i have to pull maximum number of audience into the theater mm. that is the target uh, so i worked around it i know uh, here and there i am going i am doing something over the top but still that's what people expect from him is what i right. feel that's yeah. what i also enjoy very unusual creation um, when you're making a film after this uh, ott era for so, uh, what Rajnika. i feel is for big films people come to theater to celebrate and yeah. enjoy and um, just to feel the <laughs> or of the theater and uh, being rejinism rejinism is the bottom backbone of that uh, film yeah is what uh, in my opinion i totally took it in that way and i wrote it in that way and executed in that way and i think it worked finally in my doubts cleared only after the release of the film <laughs> yeah. i feel that i had my own doubts Same after watching Johar. the film i i think <laughs> i feel that he playing his age was the best thing for the film absolutely yeah i i think it worked the most yeah yeah I, I, without that i don't think it's still the work as much as it worked uh, no, i don't work it's the, it's uh, the story starting so so many people were telling me like don't gray is uh, yeah don't i am not inside i think don't show is gray has something like that all right well but uh, when people were people from the industry saying it so confidently still give him a wink <laughs> yeah it shakes you yeah it shakes me Yeah. but after a point after 10 days of shoot i was really confident and uh, i saw the scenes were working the scenes were working okay mm. then i left it to the universe mm. they did stay in trust in your gut sir yeah like that <coughs> make your style of film yeah kartik when did you leave it to the universe for the second kanda double x yeah. actually i had doubt i mean the, the idea for this you know like came uh, right at, after the next year of jigadana jigadana got released in 2014 2014 yeah so 2015 the project was all set um, i mean i'm in mean, I mean, total contrast with what vitri sir said no? the, there was a producer there was a hero who wanted to do this and i just had the idea for the first stuff i mean what uh, the film is going and then uh, and the, i also had one idea where the film takes i mean if you have seen the film uh, the, really the first stuff happens in madurai and then they travel to some place and then the the main idea of the film is to show what the what's the power of cinema as such yeah. and uh, i wanted uh, to show that through a story that doesn't happen in madurai it's in a total different world so the idea i had that time in 2015 i had doubt that this is not the right one or this is not uh, so uh, i said no i mean at that time i could have actually started the project because uh, um uh, if if the, the complete script is not ready in my, my i mean in writing and uh, this one i i i don't i can't go and do anything in the, in the spot so you need to have it absolutely clear in your mind yeah not not my even the paper also like uh, like the complete script with the short vision with this otherwise you do need to talk yeah <laughs> <laughs> i got it and he was saying i, I thought it was nice and he's he's a blessed uh, yeah. uh, person yeah. Yeah. i i always tell this any like when someone comes and tells uh, they, they would like to work with me as an ad youngsters come and i tell them If you can learn something from my films, please watch them and learn. Please don't come and learn the way I work. That's not the way you should be working. You need, you need to write this. All the producers are thankful. Yeah. <laughs> I always say that. It's see, this is an accident. I always have this analogy of cricket. Like when you have proper footwork and you have like you 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 base yourself properly, then like you, when you're out of form, you can gain back your form. Yeah. It's like you know, without footwork, you hit hitting success while you are in form. That's what I'm doing now. When the form is out, then you're gone. You can't gain back. Well, so, it's not going to happen. 
<laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah. So, uh, that's what. So, I'm like quite opposite of Wetley's there, but right. I, I know. So, so you ha- you didn't have the script clearly enough yeah, to make it. Yeah, to where the story is taking. I mean, yeah. uh, so then I left it at that point in 2015, and <laughs> I didn't uh, think of doing it also. And uh, I think you now after like it was um, eight nine years again uh, later again the same like Lawrence again asked like, did you even think of of that script again? Do you have that idea now? So then, that time I was after I finished Mahan and I was free for some. Then I again thought about the script, and that time um, uh, actually it is what Nelson said. No, it is actually the universe which came in because um, the the elephant factor and the forest factor came into my mind, and that's when I actually felt yeah, this is going to be the script. And then I started writing, and when I felt confident about the script, I I said okay, and then the film started. So I had doubt eight, eight years back, and that that doubt actually pushed this film for. More than eight years, wow. and then I started it. But I, I, I feel it's good because if I had made that film that time, definitely I would have screwed up big time in the film. Mm. That's what I, my, and uh, I think that that the thought process took its time so many years to come into my mind, and then into the script, and then now the film is there. That's yeah. what I believe. Yeah, yeah, which is what you said, yeah. Hemant, about Sapta Saga. Yeah. If you'd made it then, it would have been no, because I think else. some stories demand a certain. Evolution of you as a as a creator as well as mm. a writer as well, and I think only when you experience a certain emotions yourself and change your worldview can you write it effectively. Otherwise, it will feel very filmy, yeah. mm. like it won't feel like it is coming from the right place. You know, it might work, it might not work. That is secondary, but the process of creation should feel like you know it is coming from a place where you are not writing it because. The industry demands the scene, or mm. this audience demands the scene. It's flowing. It has, it has to flow. Yeah. yeah. So I think for me, the I would whatever I wrote 13 years back, 12 years back, would be very amateurish in compared to what it is now. Yeah. It's, mm. it's more well thought out, and more experienced. <clears throat> you know, as directors, all of you are making hundreds of decisions all day long. Right, the doubt is there, anxiety is there, but finally people are coming to you for answers, and you have to give them the answers. I want to talk a little bit about how you arrive at these decisions. How do you decide when to move a camera? How do you decide what lens to use? How do you decide to go wide, close? Like, Karan, you did this sequence in Rocky or Rani where they're both walking. It's a pivotal scene which leads up to the scene where they decide they're going to swap. Right? You do this as a single continuous shot. Which ends with my favorite dialogue of the year: "Handle with care. I'm a fragile," <laughs> which I need on a T-shirt. Yeah. But why do that as a single continuous shot? I think most filmmakers will tell you that uh, <laughs> there's no way. I I would I would be very perplexed to know if that everybody knew that oh this particular scene can be shot in this particular way when you reach that location, even yeah. if you record that location, you've seen it a hundred times. In fact, me and uh, Manush, who was the DOP, we discussed that we had like we kept that scene um, for pretty much most of the day because uh, it was a long. It was actually actually the point it starts at in the film uh, is is actually one fourth into the scene. We've already shot in one shot lot before, which got cut in the edit. It starts abruptly a little bit because of uh, whatever reason. And somehow, when I reached the location, I felt. Uh, with it, Ranveer and Alia have such terrific uh, <coughs> conversational chemistry. It's like they allow each other that gap when required. They speak over each other when needed. Uh, you know, two like actors who are in sync with something. each other. That happens only when that happens. You know, mm-hmm. um, I've last seen it with Shahrukh and Kajal. You know, when I worked with them in 1998 and then 2001, and I feel with the both of them, we tried this as it just happened there organically. I took the call. I said, let's try doing it in one and then see if we need the coverage. But it just it just it just went so smoothly that one shot just went so smoothly that we were done by one PM. And then we were like, we have no other shoot to do <laughs> because nothing else was planned. And you know, I'm also the producer uh, of the film. And I feel like if I call pack up right now, I've lost a day and I'm staring at my EP. Absolutely. And then I'm thinking, should I for just cheat sake do such work, you know, uh, you know, to just pretend that I made use of the day. So then I came up with this big idea, let's do it from, from back also. So we, so we started and I was like, where am I feeling really? I am the producer. I should take this call and I'm exhausted. It's been 
30 days in the heat. <laughs> so I was like, back up, you know. And then I got a frantic call from Apurva. I was seeing with my company. And he was like, you, you didn't shoot the whole day. I said, I didn't need to. What could I do? <laughs> we were I not. didn't have another location. Yeah. That's the upside. And it's happened to me actually yeah. with Shah Rukh and Gajal way back in 98. Where they, there's a pivotal moment where they meet each other after eight years. Um, and uh, I just said, you know, I, I explained the scene to them. And they said, oh, awkwardness and whatever. <clears throat> and I played a song for Atmosphere. And the two of them came into the frame. They performed it. Something before the rehearsal began, I told uh, the DOP, Santosh Tundial, I said, just roll the camera. In those days, people weren't aware of the camera rolling or anything. We rolled the camera and they came and they shot that whole moment, which I I really believe is is one of the... the I can't say it myself, I don't know why. I, uh, <laughs> but like, it's what, what I've been told uh, is, is like a special part of the film. Yeah. Um, and after we, we set cut, I was like, we're done. Uh, he said, what do you mean? Shahrukh said, now we'll take, right? I said, no, we're done. I, I rolled, we have, the, we have it in the can. <laughs> and he was like, no. And we didn't have a monitor on our set. Uh, so I went purely on because that was the time when monitors were just coming in. You know, we got to trust like, your gut, man. We all talk about that where you're like, not like yeah. now on, a you see the on, on, right, on a steam bag and then yeah. made that transition. Yeah. Um, so I was like, we've got it. And again, we had nothing to do again after that. And then I looked at my father. But you see, my father, because he was my father, mm. uh, he was like, he knew. <laughs> 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 don't do it. You don't worry about it. You anyway. worked hard enough. Yeah, you worked very he, Anyway, he thought like he thought I was the most gorgeous person on planet Earth. I was the best director. I used to get scared going anywhere with him because he would start showing off about me. And I, was like, <laughs> I used to die because he met Mani Sir at uh, at the same location of Kuch Kuch Hota. And Mani Sir was making Dilse and shooting the Chhaya Chhaya song, which to me, I was wanting to go as a student to watch. And he kept gushing about me to money. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to pinch him to say, please, I beg you, I want to, I want to dig a hole and jump into it. Because my money, sir, was God to all of us, you yeah. know, and I, and continues to be. And I, I, I went home and I said, Papa, you can't. My film hasn't released. He says, Nay, if it's your trumpet, if you don't blow it, who else will? I love it. <laughs> <That's a great laughs> yeah. So to go back to your question, it really just happens on set, right? right? I don't know. I plan. I know that to Steven short divisions are made, and we do kind yeah. of we break it down with actors, and then you know, it's, sometimes there's a process that goes on. But some many a time, I've noticed that you've broken all of that. Happened specifically to me, Rocky, only not once, but four times. Where I've done one long shot, yeah. where I just felt the need to just keep the camera going and worked it out because I felt all great actors. Why do I need so much coverage? Mm -hmm. But I think it comes from the moment you're you're, you're there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can see it. But but you'll all agree with me that the the mother of all long shots is what Vinny yeah. has yeah. accomplished yeah. Yes. in Talk about the Light Part Let's One. Go. I mean, I was watching that in the theater, Vinny, and. And it's horrifying. It's so immersive. And what's happening mm -hmm. is just so awful. But one part of me was thinking, like, how is he doing this? How is this possible? How has he not cut for now eight, nine, ten minutes? And that shot, at like least according to media reports, cost something like eight to ten crore <laughs> and took three months <laughs> to stage. <laughs> I love Karen's <laughs> reaction. Both of them and Konkano. She, was, she closed her eyes and took a deep <laughs> breath. <laughs> It's like, Urdu, I'm producer as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, actually, what happened was that was not in the plan to have that <laughs> sequence. I had already told my producer about the Spain track that was supposed to be my first shot. But then as the budget was going higher, I said, sir, we don't need to do it. In the titles, we use all the sounds and all of that. And then we'll show news clippings. Like, you know, newspaper cuttings we can show. And he was okay with it. Like after three months, he called me and told, sir, we've already still. Why hold that back? You can't shoot this in MI any other place. My so goodness. Please, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So everybody contact this producer. So, so, let's do it, he said. Good Lord. Then, we had to, my, my art director is someone who will do it very real. So we, dream producer. we built that bridge with engineers to hold what the weight of actual... a producer actual like that. Mm -hmm. Railway compartments, like we put two compartments, actual compartments there, and then three. The one that falls down is was made, and that itself was, I think, four tons or one. Yes. So they were like massive structure. The actual structure was built. It took three months. The construction took three months to to assemble all the parts and all took some time. And 
it took me a really a long time to shoot and you know going to the spot i realized that this is too big you know i mean i didn't know what to do with that kind of a set and for me personally when i choose to do a long take is when i don't know where to cut the shot yeah so i then i say okay let's try this out so i go to the spot first day i go to the set and then say okay let's do this part from here you know you you show the siren of the vehicle first it was originally supposed to be an ambulance so the ambulance siren and then the camera comes on goes to this point then we cut and show the details of the family crying and then while i was saying that you know when you cut you're going to emphasize more on that like particular detail and then each and every detail you you when you show it in when you are specifying something the the whole instead of underlining the 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 whole uh the the the, the gravity of the situation like when when highlighting each and every detail of or all the the plight of each and every individual uh passenger i thought i will give a overall view and leave most of it to the audience's imagination instead of staying there yeah. there are some references you know certain lines like you know a newly married couple is there like someone who wanted to go on a pilgrimage is there and then a child is there looking for the mother so all of that is yeah, just that just you just pass through it but then it stays in your mind yeah. and then we started rehearsing i i asked all my like boys to come back like who have already made films also all of them came and uh, there were around like 40 45 assistant directors working there wow. we rehearsed for What? 13 days and uh, because of one wrong like you know during Did the day you say 40 to 45 ad on the break so. or during the break lunch break one of the fighters tried to do a rehearsal like without the whole team and crew him he died yeah it was an accident that uh, that could have been avoided but, but very then we stopped the shoot after that and then so before that we we got wow that's awful two takes like two takes so, so we rehearsed for 13 days we shot for two days and then we got that shot but that was not the final shot that we seen the film so i used like four uh, gimbal and four operator who will carry it and then the final one the last guy was on a crane uh, with a harness mm-hmm. on him so he picked up the camera or uh, sitting on the crane and he was moved and then when he reaches a certain point the harness like mm-hmm. they put loops on his body and then he was picked up like 120 feet on a crane and then on the rope he was moved from this corner of the bridge to the other corner so it was it's like, incredible yeah like the, the, it took a lot of uh, master okay. class is happening absolutely <laughs> incredible you know nelson you were talking about how you struggle with trying to figure out what rajni sir can do and can't do right i think jio <clears throat> you went even a step further because in your film you've cast one of the iconic actors of this country and he's playing a gay man uh it's a remarkable film it's it's a story told with such compassion such tenderness but i want to ask about that conversation for you right of course mamudi sir is the producer so he signed up for it he's going into it all eyes open but when you're actually constructing this did you think of how much can i do and is is that one of the reasons why why him his character and his partner are just looking at each other from far we don't even see them ever touch each other right are those things you thought about actually the screenplay was you know exactly like this uh they meet they meet, there, there is no meeting for each of which them and they are watching they are at distance and when i uh, this is a story of two other my my friends two writers adarsh and paulson and firstly a uh, mamuka mamuka sir come into my mind so uh, i need a actor like mamuti mm-hmm. and i need a human being like mamuti so so i choose mamuti and uh, told to our story to him and he give a little bit suggestions uh, for for the entire screenplay he is also entered in 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 every screenplay discussion 
not every in between uh, he also in, uh, involved with us sometimes he send whatsapp messages for oh, can we change like this and we are like this so the support was too great i have two writers and mamuti sir and including me we both are involved in the screenplay every time we change uh, all areas uh, for example that uh, interval portion <coughs> so mamuti sir says that uh, i need a night contact with him so there is another another version is already be written in the screenplay so we change it that Uh, that is what well all are saying that the interval uh, portion it's lovely yeah. yeah that is his suggestions that it's what well and we me other chan person work a lot that we both create all these all these little little things other chat one thing and person will add something more and i will give a suggestion that's why we uh, created it and i also discussed with my editor my co director so i already told that uh, when i when i got a when i'm stuck in in doubts I will discuss with these guys only. So I will get an answer, and uh, we we made a uh, interval block like this. Mamudi like that. So that's the way. Speaking of interval blocks, yeah. The other amazing interval block yes, yes, is yes, yes, Karthik's. Yes, <laughs> yes, of course, Karthik's, but also Karthik's and Nelson. But the the what you did in that so so. in the pre interval sequence if of uh, uh, jailer is when you you've got rajini sir sitting on oh, his yeah. dining table table and it just kills me every time i think about it that he's organized this entire massacre without lifting a finger <laughs> the killers coming to get him his wife and his daughter in law sitting opposite and at one point this is nuts okay a dead body falls on their laps <laughs> and anisa just looks very cool and says just push it <laughs> <laughs> i just died when that happened i was like oh my god how yeah, in the world did. do you think of that how he's uh, nelson actually interval block alone i was thinking that ever for a month for a how month to, uh, how to stage that scene because i wanted him to be too cool in that scene in the yes. whole film uh because rather than him fighting what happens around him should be like more interesting and never seen before in his films yeah so it i it that thought process in that scene is like going on and on and on in uh, with the fight master he used to come every day and i we he used to show me few stagings we can do like that that then finally what happened i myself wrote the whole stunt like this because uh, he will have only some 6 7 dialogues what happens before the dialogue and after the dialogue how the body falls how it's falling in the ground so you scripted it out yeah it, it's totally scripted so uh, uh, and on the shooting day when the fight choreographer he used to ask me sir sir is rajini sir is doing is not doing anything is it okay is it okay so like this there are too many people are asking sir he is not at least in the end we love something <laughs> No, oh, no. I told, I told him. Yeah, and he is doing something like this. So, see, Actually, this is not enough for him. We'll write the He's jokes a big hero. In so, these decisions were a little difficult like for me. Edit, whether it is right mm-hmm. or wrong, but uh, till that fight is over, that confusion was there. Till the release, as I said, that con- this confusion was there throughout. But uh, somewhere, I liked the uh, whole staging and the mm-hmm. sequence, and I wanted him to be normally for me. I like Rajini sir when he is talking when he is. doing that mass dialogues and delivering the dialogues his style and the way he speaks that one more than his fight yeah mm-hmm. so i i consciously uh, avoided his fightings and i made it like that mm. and finally it worked so it's okay if it's not worked then i am done <laughs> <laughs> the dialogue just push it i just uh, <laughs> no, it took me oh, he has to do something <laughs> That's right. They put a dead body on their laps yeah, but, and blood on their face. Yeah, but the way he tells, you know, just push it. Just, <laughs> just push, push it. It was just fantastic. Can you tell me about your film? You know, this this meta sprawling spiritual sequel. Um, uh, and again, we're back in, with a gangster. We're back with a filmmaker in that same territory, but this time, like you said, you put in the message, yeah. right, about the yeah. environment, about the elephants. Yeah. Did you at any point have to struggle because this is something that happens a lot in the movies where the messaging overpowers the storytelling you know you're so busy trying to give a message that 
somewhere the the actual narrative starts to wobble how did you find that path and this is a movie in which there's also Clint Eastwood and there's it, there's just so much happening how did you find that exact way to kind of make it entertaining and deliver that message yeah so basically as i said before this messaging part was not my priority initially because uh, my main motive with this film is to show what cinema can do as a yeah it's the power cinema of cinema as, yeah. Yeah. yeah so so when i'm when i'm showing something like this is what a cinema can do i mean it can bring a bigger change or a bigger can create a bigger revolution sort of a thing or a bigger political change or it can it can bring down uh, the, the the overall the system which is trying to to people at all so i wanted to show something which is uh, that can connect with us and also that is very strong so that's when i i said like initially the one which i had i, I was not at all convinced because this is not enough to show what the cinema can do i mean but i'm in the end what i'm show, showing is actually that the camera which the uh, the radar's character is holding the cinema they are making is a hero of the film not yeah. not uh, uh, the caesar character or the moon so that should be worth it because the story what what they are capturing in the cinema and then what is being shown in the audience in the film and what if the ripple effect that's creating should be bigger so that's when uh, I, i when i got to know i mean this the story of a tribe that's being uh, a story of a genocide that's happening and that has been uh, i mean because when i when i when i got into the research i found out that this is not a fictional story i mean there's a lot i mean throughout the world if you take a forest if you take tribes there have been there has been incidents like this where i mean uh, for that uh, pure uh, that wealth the yeah. forest i mean a lot of tribes have been displaced a lot of uh, tribes have been killed and everything and what if there was a camera there shooting everything and then we could see that means what kind of effect it would create what if so that's when yeah. this messaging part came so the main motive was not to tell this message but to show that okay uh, if if cinema could have been used in a better way in this situations or a, when a genocide is happening uh, it's it's a it's a, what is it so it's a best case scenario which i thought like right. what if cinema could have been used in that way right right I also want to talk a little bit about casting. Uh, Konkuna, like you, cast Tilotama, who is one of our finest actors. Agreed. And is is always sort of Dosed. you know straight jacketed in some sort of uh, a certain class of people or or the house help, and you totally turn that around. You cast her as the affluent mm-hmm. upper class woman who comes home and finds her domestic help having sex on her bed. What is the I magic that of that? What is the excitement of that? That what you did betty you know you see suri and we think okay comic actor or you uh, kartik we see raghava lawrence we say horror comedies but you cast him completely differently when you see an actor and you say okay i'm going to do this i'm going to just switch this around completely tell me about that um i think it's exciting uh, to see people who how you've not seen them before yeah. so it was um, for me it was exciting for her not to be the domestic worker mm. because whether you're a domestic worker or whether you're the employer or a ceo of a company it is not based on your looks actually we do that in films sometimes but in reality it's anyway not like that mm-hmm. so there's no reason to adhere to what we've been doing kind of falsely in films anyway we can just look at real life only so <laughs> that for me what i enjoyed that very much i liked the idea of you know changing that uh, particular casting around that gave me a certain excitement and i wish that people would cast more imaginatively i think yeah. i've also suffered from that in a sense because you know one has not like for example not done too many gray roles things like that so it's nice to see people how you've not imagined them yeah yeah and is that also coming in a sense from your career as an actor you know maybe subliminally but that i've not really thought of i mean in this particular case it's because i myself was tired of seeing tilottama regularly cast as uh, a domestic worker even though she's done a wonderful job absolutely and, uh, she's amazing some she's of these roles actress. have been really well fleshed out as well so it's it's not that it's just that um, i mean i think she's a wonderful actress i actually honestly other than this um i find her very modern in her sensibility and in her reactions and her uh, the way she expresses it's not something that you'd seen before yeah. so that i wanted that and i wanted a slightly um not necessarily very relatable 
I wanted somebody who's a little quirky, who's a little bit of an oddball, maybe, you know, all those little elements which are already there in Tilottama in any case. Yeah, yeah. Avinash, I think of you as the master of stillness. You know, there's such a quietude in your cinema. And, and you said somewhere that I want to observe my protagonist. I don't want to intrude upon. Mm. Can you talk Great about line. that a little bit? So you get this film, I guess, uh, after Patal, because it was extremely dramatic. And then when you're shooting five, six pages a day, you know, continuously with that kind of an intensity. Uh, I, I wanted to come back to this kind of a space. Like I'm a big fan of Rishikesh Mukherjee, Sai Pranjpe and, and their cinema, Gudar Saab. And, and, and uh, I, I, I really had not planned like, it, it will be this observant kind of a film. Like it, it's it's a very talky sort of a film. Like, a di- like Killer was not like this, you know? But it, it evolved quiet. Like while shooting. Like I observed and, and actors were doing their things. And, and obviously because Jaidi Palawat, I, I didn't think of him. He was not my earlier choice. Like mm. like it like all the casting, it, it fell through. Like this film, film I, I think it, it came to me. It, like I didn't make it, you know? I don't remember. So, so it was very instinctive sort of a it. choice. I, I just didn't feel like cutting. I just felt like ob- observing and, you know, and, and every day by two o'clock we used to rap, you know, that's, yeah, <laughs> like just, just a page and a two and Karen that's reactions. it. Like I, I don't light at all because I, I, I shoot mostly available lights. And, and because, I, you know, uh, series is a, is a very anxiety driven form. Mm-hmm. Something has to happen you after, to after you know, like it, it structure wise, it's very different. Mm-hmm. And uh, every, every episode has to have that hook and this and yeah. that. And that's why feature film, feature films catharsis is very different than the, uh, than the series. Like, like if someone asks me like, okay, name a show which has changed your life. I don't know, maybe a, 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 a show or a two. But but with feature films, if someone asks me like, okay, just tell me like, what is the which is the film which which has changed your life? There's so many, you know, because catharsis is completely different. So I I just wanted to come back to this sort of a space where no drama is happening, you know, nothing is happening, and just observe and feel and and see what kind of a catharsis it would happen. Yeah. Because because pandemic that that time was was like I I went through a lot of like emotional personal turmoil. And I had to sort of like rest my case and come back to this. And I'm glad that it happened. Well, your your film has all good people like Gio's film. They're all good people just struggling with their circumstances. Uh, I also want to talk about love stories because I interviewed Siddharth Anand in January, right after Pathan. And he said to me, I'd love to make a love story, but I don't know how to make it anymore. How can you make a love story in today's times? But Himant, you made a very, very stirring love story. Karan, you did that as well. Uh, yours was happier, more joyous, <laughs> left us a little more uplifted than yours. <laughs> it just devastated me. Uh, but what is the trick to telling a love story today when, when the idea <clears throat> of relationships, when love. so much has changed? I actually don't think so much has changed. I <clears throat> am of the belief that love is the same. The, what we see is a lot of noise from today, but I'm not denying that there's, there has been no change in terms of how relationships are looked at and how, you know, uh, how people talk about love today. It's, it's far more experimented. People are far more experimental than before, but the ethos in terms of what demands of you to be in love is the same. You have to be ready for pain, right? You have to be ready to be uh, weak in front of somebody else. You can't have walls, right? I mean, I'm not talking about a relationship between, you know, two people in a romantic nature. It can be any, it can be collaborative also, yeah. even in a work environment. So there is a certain way, there's a certain demand that you have to give yourself to the other person and hope that the other person treats you with respect and care, right? That I think will be there as long as we exist. That is fundamental to us as people. So for me, that became very important while scripting the story and when making the film. Because I wanted to focus on characters in terms of how they give themselves to each other and not really dramatize that. Like I wanted to capture everyday stuff. Things like, you know, 
the way they talk to each other, the way they fight with each other, like you know, there is a certain Organic, habitual yeah. attitude towards couples that they don't realize that they have, you know. But for somebody who's like, if I'm in a coffee shop and if I watch a couple from a distance, there's a certain voyeuristic element to love stories, mm. which make it feel like okay, that moment is mine now. You know, when I watch Money Search films, that's the reason why it stays with me because I feel like I was in that moment with somebody else, yeah. but it's not my moment. So I've always aspired to make a love love story because I want to have in my filmography all kinds of stories. Like I want to do like I want I've always wanted to do a love story. I've always wanted to do an action film. So I want to because I've grown up watching all of them, mm -hmm. but. This the love story that I've made is the thing Artists that I like have at maximum thing. impact on uh, growing up. So that's that's how that was sort of the uh, fundamental idea around which me and my co-writer Gundu approach the writing mm -hmm. to keep it very vulnerable, keep it real. You know, we don't have to dramatize, we don't have to explain what love is to people. We mm -hmm. have to assume that they know it. Right. We have to assume the intelligence make them partake audience. in that moment, right? And create that slightly voyeuristic experience. Yeah. So that's how I went about it. I was very doubtful, but I'm glad it's it's worked. Current for you, you know, you're you you've been making love stories for twenty years now. Yeah, but twenty five. But the irony is that uh, I don't know anything about the male female dynamic actually. Uh, you know, it's actually right. completely alien it's to very me. Very foreign first. to him. Love, and I haven't even been love, in a strong relationship that's lasted long enough for me to tell stories of love. Mm -hmm. I have because when I grew up, I grew up on the fodder of of romance and love in uh, in Indian cinema and Hindi cinema. Uh, Raj Kapoor and Yash Chopra, vintage Guru Dutt, uh, mm -hmm. they were all influences. So all I was doing was all I was doing was deriving from cinema. You know, till I realized that I had to stop deriving because now everybody's going to catch it. You know, um, I couldn't do it anymore when the world woke up and social media arrived and there was internet releasing. And I was like, okay, now they're going to realize that, you know, actually all he's doing is I'm just copying this yeah. from Suraj Varjatya, this right. from Yash Chopra, this from Guru <laughs> Dutt. And I, I said, I have to stop doing it. I have to start creating an individual voice. Yeah. Um, and then every piece of um, a drama or love came from my observations of other people and their relationships. The thing is, when you're single that long, everybody comes and talks to you, right? Even the couples who you're friendly with, you hear the, the female perspective and the male perspective. And then suddenly you realize that, you know, there are many perspectives and you clap with both hands. And I make Kabi Alvedana Kena because I was fed up of like people talking about their versions of infidelity. Either they took like the high ground with it and said that how, you know, you can't endorse infidelity and it shouldn't be the deal breaker. Or there were the others who were saying like, why is it a deal breaker? It's a mistake made. You can still move on. And I'm like, what What do you mean that you're endorsing something like infidelity? It's already sold out. You know, <laughs> everyone's already, you know, it's a, it's a weak spot in so many marriages. We rush in on the carpet, but it exists. Yeah. It exists. So I was like, that movie was made by a series of observations that I made and conversations I had had with very close friends. Otherwise, I know nothing about infidelity. I have to have a relationship first to cheat on them. You know, so I guess that is only not happened. So then where am I going to start cheating? So it all happened from there. That's why I made My Name is Khan right after that, which was something I deeply was affected by in terms of like, and then soon the way which I had to do nothing, it was my holiday film. Uh, I was not planning to climb any cinematic mountain with that film and nor did I. And Ariel then arrived as a love story, but that was my story. Because I then in those six years fell in love with somebody that was not mine. And I understood what one-sided love then I realized that there is a creature called unrequited love that is heartbreaking. It can shatter you to pieces, to smithereens actually. And there's a physical pain. When we say heartache, it's not symbolic. Mm -hmm. It is true. Mm -hmm. It hurts. It hurts as hell. And you feel like, like, like literally the earth has slipped by, you know, and you don't know what to do. And I realized making that film, uh, that was the most cathartic journey I've ever had with the film. Uh, and because everybody said the end is polarized and you know, why, why, why have you gone this way? But it's just wow, the way I took the narrative. Ago. And uh, at one point, Ranveer actually <laughs> no, caught me. When he talked about heartbreak, Because I was took so invested breath. in the material. Mm. Because it was coming to me, the way I was saying the lines, the way I was expressing the scenes. He said, one she second, am I playing you? 
and I was like, yes. And he's like, Anushka is, I said, a person I would like to not meet for a while. So I was like, he's like, one minute, this is all coming together. Sit me down. He took me to his room. I think we, we got drunk talking about my, my love story. And the next day I felt like he had a spring in his step because he had, he had all the, 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 all the, uh, tools that he needed to perform. The raw material, part. yeah. Uh, so I don't know. And with Rocky Rani, I never reviewed it as a love story. I reviewed it as my homage to Hindi cinema more than anything else. Everything I grew up on, you know, the old song references, the characters, uh, the cultural differences. But what I did want to do is within that bring in a commentary of things that I believe very strongly about. I grew up dancing uh, on my own to Indian music and being mocked at by my friends. <clears throat> Uh, I grew up very large and being fat shaped. That made its way into the cinema. And I grew up again understanding that people can have love stories that they brush up with the carpet because I've known it of my own family. So Rocky Run is a series of my beliefs. It's a series of my convictions and, and also something like the cancel culture scene in the film is something that I firmly believe that because I was fed up of people telling you to shut up. You know, when mm -hmm. you say the wrong thing, I'm like, teach me. I might say the incorrect thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we've grown up in a different circumstance, you know, we've grown up saying things and using words, terminologies that we don't mean to be offensive, but you know, they, it's just the way we grew up. It's the way we were taught. I realized much later what, what stalking was, um, was criticized for was I thought was intense romance. Mm -hmm. I was like this man chasing this woman and really pursuing her. how romantic till one day I was sat down and mm -hmm. even like, oh, yeah, well, no less. And she <laughs> told me that. That's talking. If that's talking, <laughs> that's incorrect. Mujhe to pyaar lagta tha. I felt there was passion in that. You know? Um, I, and you know, when you see all all of that that you do and the mistakes that you make, you made, like the gender politics of kuch kuch hota hai, I understand are incorrect as compared to the gender politics of Rocky Oran. Because now I've evolved, I've understood and you know, and then, then, then you have someone like Sandeep Banga already telling you like, why are you listening to anybody? Just do your own thing. <laughs> That's uh, right. And I'm like, still, I feel like you've got to kind of understand that with age comes evolution. It's being a parent specifically, a uh, parent of twins, a boy and a girl, you understand how important gender politics are because you've been raised in a certain way and you don't want to make those mistakes. You don't want to tell your children that, oh, you wear pink movie yep. and you wear blue. Correct. It's okay for both of them to wear pink and blue. Yep. And also, yes. you don't tell the boy that don't cry like a girl. Yep. It's yes. just the most peculiar. So I have to train even the people at home not to say these things. You know. So I, when you say love story, I'm like, the irony is that I wouldn't know the first thing about love. You know, and I've only made a career out of it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, stranger things have happened, but this is the strangest part of my career. I have a few more questions. Um, <clears throat> Avinash, Gio, Kokana. You all work in a lower register, right? The tonality is, 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 is sort of more hushed, you know? Um, and when we talk, when we look at massive films, right? Um, we look at the tent poles in theaters. Um, we look at Three massive temple. stars. Uh, and those, and the conventional wisdom always says that, okay, this is what's working. This is what people will come to theaters for. Do you all ever think about how will I nurture my aesthetic? How will my story go out into the world? I mean, is it daunting at all? Um, no, I don't have to worry about that really, actually, yet. I've not had to worry about that kind of thing now because uh, in both the films in Death in the Gunge and in uh, Love Stories, I think it was just, it came from a personal space. I didn't think anybody would give me money to make it. Even when I made it, I didn't know if anybody would come to watch. Mm -hmm. So I had to please myself. Mm -hmm. um, and sure even sure in uh, Love Stories, I think... Honestly, I was so excited by the idea myself. I was just like scandalized myself, you know, by the whole thing. <laughs> and I found it just so exciting. It was scandalized. I was like, oh my God, can we? Oh my God, should we? And then how to go about it in a way that is even uh, palatable. Yeah. That itself and how to present that. It was so exciting. Even uh, like earlier when you were talking about camera and it was, I was thinking, you know, when somebody was answering, I was thinking things like consent. 
like for example the camera only goes inside the room with Seema only when Seema knows that Ishita is watching before that the, we don't go inside you know mm. so all of that was so exciting to think of how to translate that or how to because you know when we were writing the script so the whole obviously the floor plan and the layout was so important because of the mirror and yeah. mm -hmm. you know so then putting all of that inside a house how will we make that happen trying to you know like a few times we've done for example what is a not a real split screen but a like a manual almost split screen foreground background make because they are from two different parts of society you know yeah. those kind of things so all of that had consumed me me and Pooja Tolani, my co-writer and we had a lot of fun with that. Luckily, we didn't have to think of these kind of things. Till now, I have not had to. <laughs> I want to take a moment and address the last moment in Konkana's film. The one between Tilotama and Amrita. Um, I, I don't know if I've seen a more sparkling display of talent left just to their own device by the vegetable mm -hmm. vendor. Yeah. And <laughs> I really felt like moment. only an actor could direct the scene. Because there are there are pauses, there are silences, there is awkwardness, mm -hmm. and yet there is resolve. Yes. At the end of it all, there's a resolve. And done so seamlessly. I went back and I rewound and I watched that scene thrice. You know, it's it's really because <laughs> it moved me on many levels and layers. It's so believable. I mean, I, mean yeah. I know I spoke to you, but like you that, that moment, besides the entire film and how genius it was in its projection, that moment, and I beseech everyone to go and visit that film and specifically as filmmakers of Sire Files observe that moment. I thought it was tremendous. It oh is. My God. It Thank is. Jim, <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Do you wonder or do you just make your cinema? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, right now I've got a tagline that I'm, I'm a feminist kind of filmmaker, a political filmmaker. I have to change that. Personally, I love action movies. Uh, for me, th there is a reason for action. In in our feelings, in, in our mass kind of feelings, in two hour, more than ten thousand people <laughs> died. <laughs> there is no reason for that. But, Nelson, you want to address? No, that? no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, I already told. Uh, I already told Karthik that I love this. There's movie. a reason behind yeah. every yeah. death. Yeah. That, that is okay, sir. Yeah. <laughs> so. I have to change myself that I, I have to try the comedy, I have to try uh, these kind of movies, Jailer and Karthi kind of movies. And I don't know why I reached the, the same kind of movies. And when society <clears throat> affects me, my fa our families affect me, relationship affects me. So uh, for career wise, uh, profession wise, I have to try all genres. Mm. So I am for next. I'm trying different one. I'm trying, keep trying. <laughs> Not sure what is my next. Well, you're doing a great job. Yeah. And I think feminist filmmaker is a great tag. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but continuously. Loved that film. If there is no feminism in my film, people try to find out feminism in my <laughs> movies. <laughs> yeah. You just have to have yeah, it. Yeah, there, there is a politics in my movies. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. But I made a movie named uh, Sri Thanya Catering Service. Yeah. It's it's people not watch that yet. It's in the Amazon Prime. It's released in theater. It's not worked well. People didn't connect that movie. Hmm. I tried a comic piece of something, yeah. but it didn't work well. But we will find out there is a feminism in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> there is it. Why? That is not loud. I don't know. But I I am trying to break out all this. For you, Avnash. I think I, I want to do every kind of film. It's yeah. like it's it's. Um, Mukhlaan was my most favorite director. You know, like I've grown up watching Gudu Danuwa's films. You know, but it's like uh, where you are, what kind of impact and what kind of resources you are going to get. You know, like when I when I when I passed out from FTI, I I knew that like I don't know anyone, and my journey. Uh, in in fact, I chose cinematography. As like I opted learning cinematography because I, I didn't have any other option. I was like, I don't want to die out of hunger. Like it's mm -hmm. it's it's at, at least calm. Malab, you just have to be on the set and and I was like, agar filmo ke bare mein baate karte karte me, your life goes on, it's fine. You know, so so just just to to be on set and everything, that was enough. And it happened such that my my, my first release was my own film. And after that I I I was like, what what just did happen? You know, it it, it went to Berlin whatever happened after that 
and and my bread and butter was not depending upon cinematography so i was very sort of like okay i want to make a regional film and that's that's where my passion lies and this and that and i sort of like i i i i didn't have any other subject it took me a long time to come back to directing when sudeep sharma offered me patal lok and it, it was not like i i didn't get any offers or this or that but i was very sort of like loyalist to what kind of film script i want to be part of and and i never sort of like i knew that like of course his films have been like very matlab main monologues de sakta hu main yahan pe baith ke you know it's it's really really to to uh, yeah so the three of us was a very sort of like strategic sort of a move yeah in a way because i was like no one is making this kind of film right now and i have four to five months and if i can crack this down right now let me just see like if it happens and and it it was kind of an audacious sort of a uh, you know thinking like just i did you know i just and then whatever i'm i'm writing next is very different i'm writing a western musical this that very different it's change notes with him you know on of making course, a western like a big, big fan <laughs> of his big fan of his like you know the the way he uses background score and like his editing style and everything yeah. huge fan i am you know so 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 that's that's why so it's it three of us was very strategic yeah. you know like yeah ye abhi ho sakta hai baad mein mujhe nahi pata ye aisa mujhe karna hai nahi karna hai i don't know yeah you know and as far as the distribution <coughs> is concerned uh, uh i there i i sort of like went a little off radar with the with the because i i felt like okay this space is new and uh, we didn't think like patal look will become such a huge hit back then but just because like it it released during pandemic and all that it it became a rage and it was also and, very good yeah and, and we were just sitting in in our houses and uh, like and didn't even get a chance to celebrate uh, whatever like you know yeah. like people are just calling and this and that and 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 but but you know uh, particularly with this film i felt like it is it is very correct it's it's correct film for ott yeah but then no one was buying it you know and i'm like oh oh what i you know so that that was a little sort of like big because what happened during the pandemic the decisions uh, whatever like and you know how yeah. how, how yeah. things are so it's, it's been a great learning experience but i i'm, I'm very happy that like we, it it found its own very limited release and whoever has seen the film they're writing and uh, i'm i'm very happy with that and it is it is going to come out in a couple of months time so yeah how lovely no i think good work finds an audience okay two more questions I want you to pick one Good Indian film that you saw audience. this year that just blew your mind that you wish yeah. you had made. Betty, let's start with you. Okay. <laughs> I I I haven't seen much, but I from whatever you've it's seen, it's not no, it's not this year. Uh, I don't I don't think I would say that. I wish I had made it. I wouldn't say that, but I really liked Kurangal, uh, Pebbles. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I really liked the notes film. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was fantastic. I got some wonderful. Yeah. Oh, that, I saw it last year, but I would still say that yeah. yes, it's a wonderful film. The best one that I saw. Kathi, it's a good film. Ah, Sai Day. We now when I saw that, uh, I felt this is my uh, as as they blew me off. Uh, yeah, yeah. Went towards Sai Day. I told him, but uh, Sai Day was more than enough for me. <laughs> 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 you don't care what happened to Manu. Uh, no, I wanted to see, but uh, still, I have not come out of that. Yeah, the, the it's 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 an intoxicating. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Nelson, for you, for me, Dada and Kamal. It's a small film, but no, it connected very well to me. I felt it's uh, very real, and it had uh, all sort of emotions like uh, feel good and uh, emotion and everything was there, and it fitted well. But and I like Pebbles, of course, Pebbles. I don't know whether I can pull it off. Seeing that they make pebbles would be I would like to be interesting like that. Really? Yeah. Talk about that and Shri Chitrapalam last year. <laughs> oh, I love Shri Chitrapalam. Yeah. Oh, so that's that. some rom-com or uh, the he just mentioned the something the smaller less people dying. Yeah, yeah, we love. Yeah. 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 Less <laughs> crowd in the spot. <laughs> no, nobody cutting anyone's head off. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, I am far from that. I don't know. It's automatically happening like that. I like to do films like very very small films and romantic films. That's what I want to do, but I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, as far as it goes, well, you know it goes well. It's okay. Karan, I loved Side A and Side B. Um, I had the privilege of seeing Side B. He sent me a link very kindly. Uh, when I saw Side A, which was on Amazon, uh, 
I'm going to try and get the pronunciation of the name. It's Sapta Sagara Chailo. Sapta Sagara Chailo. Close, very close. Okay. <laughs> Sapta, okay. Sorry. Uh, but when I saw it, it was just like, to me, it was like a heartbreaking love story. It but is. But it was also so emotionally fulfilling. And, you know, it was like, and I love that the film begins with the love story. It, and they're so, they're going about it in such a, like a lived in way, you know, and, the, and they're on their hunt for the house. And, and when it ended, I was like, you know, I really felt like a stone on my heart at that time. You know, it really just felt like so. And then I was waiting, waiting, waiting. And then, you know, I, as soon as it landed, uh, he sent uh, me the link and I, I saw it just day first day night and I felt very complete. Yeah. And, and uh, so I would say yes. I mean, I watched some very special films. Everyone here has made such amazing, amazing work. Commercially successful films are, in fact, the toughest to make. Yeah, absolutely. To me. Uh, to pack in the ingredients uh, of Jigat Handa or Jailer and to do what like everyone here, what Vetri has been doing for centuries. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like he's he's really such a master. Yeah. Uh, but even to do what Konkana did, I mean, like, which is like I just told you about that moment that blew my mind. Um, but that the, this series and Avinash's exotic work has stayed with all of us. Uh, but this particular series of two films really moved. Yeah. Tolkana, so kind, you know, always so generous you are, Karan. Um, I have to say that I have not uh, watched very much. Unfortunately, I have to watch that. Uh, and uh, today, so I'm going to go back tonight and watch the side A, side B. <laughs> I'm dying to watch that now. Um, so I can't exactly remember this year ka what it was. Sure. But something that has really uh, stayed with me, I think, is Great Indian Kitchen. Uh, mm. I think it's because... One of the greatest Indian movies of all time. It's so normalized. We've all grown up like... I mean, in two different degrees like this, but to know when to shine a light on what and how to present it, that really blew my mind. And I was like, subtlety. oh my God, why didn't I think of this? This is like a, I mean, I found it a very you know modern, it almost like a horror gore story and very feminist and I really strong. I think I did know that. And I, I didn't yeah, I love that. I have no interest. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no need. Fabulous. I do not need to Gio, see a remake of that. what did you like? Uh, my favorite is uh, B32, Mudal Mudal means 244 Vare. Uh, it's about, it's a it's brass size, B32 to 44. Oh. Uh, directed by Sruti and produced by Kerala government and released in theatre. Uh, but uh, one of my favorite movie uh, directed by a woman, only woman can make that movie. Mm. That's why I, I like very much that. One of my no, favorite, no, all time favorite movies. And we got a new post person, new view yeah. uh, about woman. I can't make that. I can't think about that kind of things. Mm -hmm. It's all about boobs. <laughs> Great film. Really? I, I have yeah. to catch that. I haven't seen yeah. that it's yet. It's not yeah. available right now in the OTT. Yeah. I think it will come in soon. Maybe our government start an OTT platform. <laughs> yeah. Now you heard Producing about it. Producing by government. No. But You've seen it there is a no. lot of problems Sounds interesting, for though. watching this movie for the public. I mean, yeah. So... You must watch that. I will. Absolutely. Yeah. Avinash, for you? For me, it's uh, Vinod Sir's 12th Fail. Oh, like yeah. It. I've Thank heard so you. much I'll about take that the 12th Fail. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, but it, really it didn't moved. come here. Mm. It's with... Really? Um, Avinash suggested I get him the on the round table. I said, no, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> dying to watch that. I haven't seen yeah, that I, yet. I've been I, hearing just the best things. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's really He's special. Very it's very special. Very, very special. Thank you. I actually haven't had the chance to watch too many films, so I have a huge list of films to catch up on, starting with Vitrisa's yeah. film. I'm a huge fan of Vitrisa, grown up, you know, like my, uh, the, the director that I used to assist was Vitrisa's uh, uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've met him as an AD. Yeah, he's <laughs> met me as an AD. We're yeah. sitting here uh, with him, he's like a very big deal for right? me. Yeah. Even uh, Karthik, uh, he, when I saw Jigar Tanda, the first part, I hadn't made my first film yet. I mm. remember the feeling of walking out of the theater and feeling that sense of, I'm a filmmaker, you know. Oh. I will not give up on my dream. Oh. And uh, it's a very special thing to be sitting here and I will be watching their films, all the films. Yeah. But uh, there are moments, the two films that I saw was Sir's Ra Rocky and Rani. Mm. The whole thing, I was telling Sir right before the conversation that the dance sequence, the way it is choreographed. Yeah. People take dance for granted in Indian films. The the amount of effort that the that that uh, Ranveer and uh, the other actor mm -hmm. I forget the name of the gentleman 
it's so beautiful the way he i mean and the point that it is making yeah that you know a man can dance and there is nothing to laugh about it so beautifully made so beautifully shot uh and in jailer uh the that whole entry of shivanna shivanna is mm-hmm. from from canada and i'm a huge fan of shivanna so his entry with the tissue box it is just the slow it's, motion it's, yeah it's, <laughs> it's fantastic for me it is everything that is that is not a must film should be yeah mm. right you do the whole structuring of the scene is so fresh because you expect the hero to come and beat 30 people in this film he does exactly the opposite he comes and gives a tissue box like in the interval rajvi sir is just sitting he's not doing anything that sort of reinventing the wheel yeah. is very very beautiful yeah, to watch kind of and it's that. the hardest thing to do because you're not doing films only for yourself uh you're also trying to you know maintain an artistic sensibility while catering to people who you might not relate to even you know so uh, that was like a very big moment but i have seen all the trailers of all the films i'm going to watch all of them how lovely okay i want to i want to end with something that writer director paul schrader said in an interview okay and then i quote he said in the late 60s and 70s it wasn't that the films were better or that the filmmakers were better it was the audiences were better the moment that a society turns to artists for answers great art will emerge when audiences don't think movies are important it's very hard to make important movies do you think this is true and what is our current moment are audiences seeking answers i feel that's very true because today. especially especially in uh, today in tamil scenario uh when i was making visaranai i used to tell my team if this film works in the theaters then i would call the tamil mainstream audiences the most evolved mainstream audiences and it did work in theaters and for the kind of space i have been enjoying whatever that i said now it's because people kind of connect and appreciate the film that the films that i've been making which are not the the, the you cannot call them the most uh, a uh, conventionally mainstream they are mainstream and i do make mainstream films but not in a very conventional way i i do have a different take on mainstream uh, films to appreciate those those films and uh, to make my producers invest on me the way they are doing it's the audiences also we have a tradition of voicing out like all there is a lot of political expression that happens through the viewers and there is some element of a, a common man issue that is being discussed addressed it is appreciated and now that that thing is catching up with the whole of the indian uh, cinema space i think any film that that discusses even the slightest of the common man issues uh oh, in the films were not i might be wrong here but my observation i'm just sharing my observation we're not very common man representative for the for the past uh, so, so, some years like couple of decades or even more i don't oh, know about superstar but now when there is some references from even other languages or films that are being made here itself where there is a common man representation uh, uh, an existential crisis of a common man like uh, uh, or or a political question that he needs to put forth if that is seen on cinema people do like it when and in today's world like all my everybody in the distribution industry there in tamil say post covid is the golden era of theatrical ex- cinema, cinema exhibition it's like the numbers are like huge now everybody are talking numbers is that the competition is with the numbers okay but this hero is doing that number that hero is doing this number it's just that the people are now very uh loving and forgiving also post covid they want to come to theaters they want to watch films and films that make a difference in this in in today's <laughs> political scenario is also being appreciated 
So I feel it is the audiences who are driving us to make the kind of films that we are. Yeah. I'm saying it in a very positive way. Absolutely. My Absolutely. Anyone else, Karan? Look at where we are right now. I mean, look at look at look at the directors on your outfit, and you know that so much is changed. I mean, you know, five years ago you would not have a round table yeah. like this, and today it means that we're we're talking about Indian cinema now. Mm-hmm. We're talking about films made in Tamil and mm-hmm. Telugu and Malayalam and Kannada and Hindi and yes. Marathi and Punjabi and then in every language. And I do agree with with, with Vetri when I I feel like there's a celebration in cinema halls all over again. I've grown up in single screens. I've grown up in in all the single screens of of, of Mumbai and going in watching films as a celebration, like watching entries and getting the whistles and you know dancing to songs and coming back and wanting to go back again. And I feel like post COVID, just like like he suggested, it's like I think the three years that people were just like bottled um, has actually made them want to enjoy and celebrate. Almost revenge watch movies, yeah. <laughs> like, and that's what's happening. And now everything joyous, not just larger than life, joyousness that's coming from the moment, the celebration, the celebratory nature of Indian cinema. I think all those movies are really, I like those audiences are back in throes and they're going nowhere. At one time, you know, we were we were we were graveyarded. It was like it's over for us. Like you know, we should shut shop and just start going to uh, streaming services. But that's not true. Because now streaming services will tell you that they're struggling with kind of numbers and subscriptions. <laughs> yeah. Because now everyone is going back to cinema halls and look at the resurgence of talent that has just come back. When you see, uh, I specifically mean like in the cinema, and including Rajni sir's success that he has got with Jayla is so validating. Seeing Shah Rukh return after five years, seeing Sunny Deo at age sixty six give his biggest hit of his career, Anil Sharma. You know, literally see people like see Vinod Chopra yes. make such a massive hit, who's known for such prolific work, and there's been a large sabbatical. You know, and now he emerges, and like just look at the year. It's just like it's it's almost brilliantly audacious what's happening. We have so much more to come. This year will go down um, as one of the most profitable, like profitable years of Indian cinema. If you just see the numbers, that just means there's a huge appetite for celluloid again there's a huge appetite for community viewing and uh, yes we learn so much from the power of the digital medium and there's so much talent that comes from there and that we at cinema leverage but that magic of the large screen it's going nowhere that is the best note to end on yeah. thank you everyone yeah. and again thank you for the movies um Go back and make many more. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So much. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you for having us. As always, she does a spectacular job with her interviews. Yeah, I, I cut it off. Yes, yeah, she uh, does. Yeah. It's it's that's it's not easy to do a round table with that many people. I was thinking about well, that. I was like. God, I don't even know. That's tough. Interviews are, are an interesting beast. If you've never done it before, it's an interesting beast uh, in and of itself because you have to let the interviewer do the do the talking, mm-hmm. but you have to ask them enough questions, and but you also have to be aware of if there's going to be a lull and you have to circulate questions that would intrigue this person to make them enter. Obviously we've been very blessed with the people that we've been able to be interviewed, but a round table, I don't even know if I would like doing a round table because the interviews we like to do are very in depth Yeah, of like, we we really like to dig in to this person's artistry Yeah, and you can't, in a round table, even though like they, it's a wealth of knowledge, but right. each person gets to talk right three to five times. Right. Right in a in an hour and a half interview, you get to talk about three, maybe to five times. Yeah, um, it's interesting to catch some of the perspectives. I do like agree with you. It's why we do what we do the way we do it is we deep dive. I mean, and I we don't want to talk to him for fifteen minutes. So that's why our interviews yeah. are forty five minutes yeah, yeah. long. You see him any less? It's usually because of production. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the only reason. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, there was a lot of really interesting stuff said there. A lot of really good filmmakers. Um, the, uh, something that was very interesting to me, they did talk about each other's film, but I think what we know at the time when she was talking about a film you wish you had made in recent memory that's come out, 
Uh, no one, no one mentioned the the current submission to the Oscars. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know what was going on with that. Um, I get people. There was a lot of people that did like that film, but yeah, it, it's not one that should have been sent. No, you could have named multiple people here from this year on yeah. this table that I would have rather you sent their film <laughs> absolutely uh, than and then 2018. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like <laughs> what uh, I don't know his name, but the one that made the the part one. Um, and talking about like he's supposed to spend like three quarters, he spent like 40 crores. I think it was four crore, and then it went up to 60. 60 was it 60? Yeah, and Karen Johar's mind just <laughs> exploded, exploded as the producer, yeah, <laughs> comes out 40 to 45 ADs. That's insane. Are you kidding me? I mean, it all worked obviously because that film is brilliant on a uh, big film. I'm talking Doctor Strange. Yeah. You may have four to five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was uh good night. That was absolutely <laughs> insanity. Yeah. Um yeah, and there were so many interesting things that were said. That's why these are these are difficult as well to react to because like they say so there's, much. There's so much over the, in the course of the interview. 15 yeah. Ago yeah. That you've forgotten, you've forgotten uh, exactly yeah. what they said. Um but there's so many so <laughs> Nelson, like it, it's, but one thing that is common with all artists is that even though well, these people have a lot of skill, almost nobody knows exactly what they're doing. No, yeah, like they might like the obviously they have an idea. I think people like they're talented at what they do and they know how to do it, right? But like they can't be like this is how you do it. Like I'm, I'm, I know what I'm doing. I have talent, but I'm kind of winging it. It's kind of like space exploration. Yeah, it's. We know what we need to do to get there, but we don't really know what's going to happen until we get there. Yeah. And we're going to have to make adjustments when we're there that we don't even know what's going to happen. And we're going to have things go catastrophically wrong yeah. and have to adjust. Things will go right. We never expected to go right. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, uniformly, directors repeatedly will say two things. They're beset with doubt questions anxiety on a myriad of levels and at the same time know they must convey strength and leadership because the rest of the team is looking to them to to guide what's taking place exactly yeah i, mean, I could i feel for karen jar when his dad was bragging about him oh my money that's like, like you don't if, even have a film yet and yeah. he's talking to monty rotten it's like if i was with my dad for some reason he was produced on my first directorial film and monty had come in yeah and he was like he is such a good director. I'm like, yeah. shut up. Yeah, imagine, do not imagine say your that dad, to Steven Spielberg, Monty Rock. Imagine our dads walking up to Meryl Streep or Daniel Day-Lewis and saying, my son is such a good actor. Don't you would be, dad, shut, up. shut your mouth right shut now, up. please. Say I'm a shitty actor so they'll be just, impressed. Just shut up. <laughs> just shut up. <laughs> It's great that he's a, the parents should brag yeah, about their kids. Of course, Absolutely. I would do that with my, you know, hundred percent. If I if I was around, say for example, uh, Hans Zimmer, I would proudly say, my my son has incredible musicality. And to and which he would be like, "Shut up, Mike." Could be dad. Shut your mouth. <laughs> shut your mouth. <laughs> so it's good. I'm yeah, glad and, it's, it's, and it's always so fun. I mean, anytime you see Film Companion and you see her name attached to in an interview. Sit back, relax, and enjoy, because every moment's going to be engaging yeah, she and, has, and teachy things. She has some really good questions. I do find her quirks hilarious. Me too. She finds she has to laugh at the end of a at the end of a sentence, like to fill the the silence, if you will. I think yeah. it's it's a little there's a little, and I'm sure I I'm sure I have ticks in interviews. Rick has ticks in absolutely. In, 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 like everybody habits. has these little things that you just don't know, but you can see them on other people right. when they're doing it. Right, um, and it's just it's a nervous habit. Because uh, you want to fill the silence, you want them to be like, "Oh yeah, those." But again, it, 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 she makes it look easy. Oh, she that does. is a very, very difficult thing to to command a, a, a round table and give everybody equal time. Really, really hard to do. Yeah, so. Nelson uh, is uh, is another really great um, director, uh, and what he's able to. I find it funny that he's like, "I don't, I don't know what I'm doing." I'm like, mm, "You do, you do, you do," and he has a beautiful style. Um, All of them do have their very unique, particular styles about the, the what they you know I, I, what they create i bet kangana even though she's now this is obviously that was her second film but it's a short film so maybe one and a half films right into mm -hmm. directing and she's sitting with all these directors i'm sure she felt out of place sure. a little bit a little bit even though obviously she is a director but and has like, a lot of experience uh, on screen as an actor she would probably be uh more comfortable in the um in the actors one because she's a she's a brilliant actress 
Um, but yeah, that was a interesting. Um, Karen, was, Karen just can't turn off his uh, producer producer brand. hat. No, that's it's his so primary fun. hat. So it's fun. funny. Uh, and I don't, I don't think, and what he said was true. I don't think love has changed. So like, if you're telling a love story, I think you tell it the exact same way. Yeah, you told it because you'd just be true to the emotion and the the relationship. Right. People were in love in the twenties. And they're still in love now. The, the emotion hasn't changed. Obviously, how you date and, and, the, that and is the circumstances, different. yeah. But that's not the primary thing you're interested no. in. You're interested in the story and the bond and the in the in the and just going the to the truth. Yeah, yeah, going to the truth of it. I loved the one thing. One takeaway was the description of um, forgotten his 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 name. You'll know when I make the quote. She said it's very obvious, or he said it that no, he said it that when he's making films particularly a, a love story and things of that nature that he wants to observe not intrude yeah and i thought that was a really astute observation and differentiating your shots because it's a it's a big differentiation yeah to to be observant with the lens versus intrusive and there may be scripts that from time to time require that kind of intrusiveness um for example joram requires some intrusiveness yeah you, you need to be intrusive to put you in the situation, whereas other movies like Court are more observant. Yeah. And, and that differentiation is really, really important. Yeah. Conveying story. That so. was definitely a uh, record-stopping moment. Um, wow. <laughs> anyway, if you're still here and you stayed awake, hi. Thanks for being here. <laughs> And the sound effects keep on coming. Uh, and they will never stop. Never stop. Anyways, a brilliant as always. Um, uh, so many uh, good films this year. Uh, I'm looking forward to. And it's such a, a difference because they were right. The, the, in the past years, past two years, everybody's like, I guess cinema's gone. And yeah, like no. people supporting it yeah. um, from the from the two years past due, due to COVID. And then this year just came back with a... A vengeance, hallelujah! In in all industries, yep, uh, and not just Indian Hollywood no, as well, everywhere. Um, and thank God, which is funny because it's the first year that uh, Disney didn't come out with a billion dollar film. <laughs> it's it's been funny, wonderful, it's and that's a, the same too with Marvel and DC. Yeah. The, the the movies that have been attracting attention have been the the movies that have greater artistic excellence. Yeah, uh, for the mo here in in Hollywood. Yeah, 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 that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're going to see nominations for films that in the past might not have been considered in in that prospect. So it's 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 been a, it's been a great year cinematically. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let us know uh, what other videos we should write. Let us know what you thought about this and any of those films that they mentioned in there that we, we should be yeah watching, well, that we need to see, uh, especially for the can, smaller, um, lesser known ones. Let us know what those should be down below. <laughs> Just